It says, let us therefore be zealous. That means let's be passionate about the Word of God. About us serving God. And exert ourselves and strive diligently to enter into that rest. The rest of God to know and experience it for ourselves that no one may fall or perish by the same kind of unbelief and disobedience into which those in the wilderness fail. The only reason any of the children of Israel fell in the wilderness, died. You know, everybody over 20 died before they went into the promised land. Why? It says this because they didn't enter into faith and trust and belief in God. And he's saying, he's warning us, don't fall into that same trap. Don't be religious in your thinking. Be godly in your thinking. Wait a minute. Nothing's impossible with God and me together. I'm believing, and the Word's going to operate. He's watching over His Word to make sure that it always operates properly. And so, it says this, that... Make sure that no one may fall or perish by the same kind of unbelief and disobedience into which those in the wilderness fell. For the word that God speaks is alive. Everybody say alive. And full of power. Full of power. See, we don't have to wait on God to do something. He infused His word with power. And the way it's released is inviting the Holy Spirit in to bring it alive in and through human beings. Amen? So it's full of power, making it active. It's not something just sitting around like a knot on a stump. This word is active. And you know how you activate it? By faith in the Son of the living God. Because He is the Word of God. It says in Revelations, His name is Genesis to Revelation. Amen? So it says, make it active, operative. What is operative? That means it's doing something. It's operating. It's taking hold. It's doing, and it, you know how you turn the switch on? By your faith and trust and belief in God. Turns it on, right? Energizing. The word's energizing. If you'll believe God and take Him at His word and don't believe all those other uh, reports is coming in against you, saying you're not going to make it, you've got a chronic condition, it'll never be healed, you've got to live with it. I heard a woman on TV the other day that is a proponent uh, against uh, breast cancer, and she had had stage 4, and, and I really respect her for this, except she needed to take it another level. said, we're just trying to get it so you can live with it. I don't want to live with anything destructive in my body. I want to believe God that he shows us a way as human beings, uh, even if it is through medicine. If it's through medicine, and it gets us clear in our bodies, not that every day we're having to take a pill or a shot or going down and get our bodies half destroyed with chemo just to stay alive. I want us to get set free through the wisdom of God, the knowledge of God, and the supernatural intervention of God through his word. I can believe that according to Isaiah 53. He bore our sicknesses. He carried our diseases. Why? So we wouldn't have to think about it, carrying it all your life. He did it. Let's go beyond the normal Christian. Let's believe that when the doctor says you're going to have to carry it the rest of your life, say, Doc, I respect your opinion, but I'm not accepting it. I'm going to accept the opinion of God. The opinion of God says you don't have to fall dead in the wilderness. You can go farther behind if you will believe, trust, and obey Him. Amen? So it says the words of God speaks. What He speaks is alive, full of power, making it active, operative, energizing, and effective. And effective. What does effective mean? That means when we lay hands on the sick, it can eradicate bad cells in your body that's trying to destroy it and replace it with good cells. It means that when you're suffering from a spirit of depression, we can speak to that spirit and say, get out of his mind or her mind and set him free, Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus, and you can be set free. But you've got to believe it. You've got to believe it because... It can be effective. It is sharper than any two-edged sword, 
penetrating to the dividing line of the breath of life. That means the soul and the immortal spirit. That means it can divide flesh and spirit. It can show you what is spirit and what is flesh, and you'll go with the spirit. Amen? So we need to understand that this victory comes through the cross. The Holy Spirit's empowered us to walk in victory. I don't want to be the coach of a team that always goes around because they've never won a, a game and say, well, we're losers. No, we're winners because of who we're connected with. Amen? Amen? And I don't care if you've never been in the game, you're going to get in the game. This is the game of life that everyone you touch can be delivered and set free and come to a saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ and begin to operate in a word by faith. And it will be effective, operative. It will affect the very thing you need it to. And things will come alive like never before. And you know what? You can have that discerning spirit of the Holy Spirit if you're in the Word of God, and you'll know what's flesh and what's spirit. You'll know the old teaching you need to drop and the old teaching you need to keep. You'll know what's coming forth from the Word of God will set you free and set your neighbor free and your kids free and everyone around you. If you'll believe, if you'll believe, it says, it, it, it can show you the difference between the joint samara of the deepest parts of our nature, exposing and sifting and analyzing and judging the very thoughts and purposes of the heart. That's why you've got to study the Word. It says, in this season, even the elect can be deceived if they're not in that Word on a daily basis, expecting the Holy Spirit to teach you and, and correct you and set you alive in the Word. Because... We need to be in it on a daily basis. You say, well, we can't be in it all day. Well, you can be in it 15 minutes. God can take 15 minutes with him and turn it into a 24-hour deal. <laughs> you can sit down 15 minutes in the morning in the Word, and then all day God will be rolling that over on the inside of you. He'll be showing you things you need to do. You'll be meditating in it on a daily basis. I mean, 15 minutes with God, my goodness. One word from God, Brother Copeland said, can change your whole life. What can 15 minutes with God do? Oh, not only change your life, your kid's life, your grandkid's life, everybody around you on your block, everybody that you see coming into the church, wherever you're at, it can change if you'll believe it. Don't let circumstances cause you not to believe. Let circumstances motivate you to get into the deeper things of God so those can change and line up with God. Amen? So we're, uh, we're just getting started. It, it can analyze, judge into the very thoughts and the purposes of the heart. And not a creature exists that is concealed from his sight. But all things are open and exposed naked and defenseless to the eyes of him with whom we have to do. God sees and knows everything. But he laid it out in the Word for us to walk by faith, not by sight. Do you understand what I'm saying when I say that? I, we use cliches sometimes. That means, by faith means, okay, the doctor said, well, you got three weeks to live. I don't care. There ain't nothing that can be done. And then all of a sudden you say, wait a minute. The, it, Isaiah 53 said, he bore this disease. He, he carried it for me. So, and he said, by his stripes you are healed. And 1 Peter 2.24 looked back to the cross and said, by his stripes you were healed. That means legally it's already done. How do you activate that legally? By faith brings it alive and makes it vital today. Do you understand what I'm saying? And, and God doesn't have to do any more. Your faith releases the provision of God that he's already energized in his word with his Holy Spirit. And you call on the Holy Spirit of the living God in Jesus' name. And he brings alive the very healing power that's in the word. In the name of Jesus. That song we sang, the name of Jesus. It, it's more powerful than any other name. Why? It says in Revelations, his name is from 
Genesis to Revelations. His name holds all the power of God. His name carries every verse in it. His name is so powerful. When you begin to speak Jesus, it can bring healing if you need it. If you speak Jesus, it can open opportunity up for you. Amen? Did y'all uh, hear about that little boy that got kidnapped the other day and, and uh, put him in the car? I can't remember the whole story. My wife was listening to it. He was about eight years old, wasn't he, or seven? And, uh, and the, they put him in the car and kidnapping him. And, and all he did, he began to uh, talk, talk about Jesus or sing Jesus songs. Huh? He sang, didn't he? He began to sing Jesus songs. The guy tried to slap him and beat him up and said, you shut up. And he just would not shut up. He kept singing Jesus song. Finally, he stopped and kicked him out of the car. And he was kind of roughed up, but he was saved and because he wouldn't stop singing about Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. I mean, my goodness, a lie. Doesn't it make you get excited to know that you got at your disposal anything? I mean, I knew the, this guy in Joshua, Texas, was in, uh, down in Mexico as a missionary and picked up a, a hitchhiker. And, and he, uh, he came, I can't even remember his name, but I, re, I remember the story because he came to Raymond and told the story, and it was documented. And uh, the guy pulled out a thirty-eight, and he was driving it down the road in Mexico, and uh, he just felt led to, uh, to you know, to, to pick him up. And so he stopped and he said, Put, turn off here. He hold, the hitchhiker held a 38 on him. He said, turn down this road. He went out in the field. Get out of your car. Get out. And uh, he put the, the 38 right in his face, right here. He said, in the name of Jesus, you cannot kill me. He said, the power in the name of Jesus protects me. He shot all six rounds, point-blank range, and none of them. He didn't even get a powder burn, and the guy fell on his knees and accepted Jesus Christ that was trying to kill him. There is power in the name of Jesus. So, inasmuch as we have a great high priest who has already ascended and passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, Let us hold fast our confession of faith in Him. Is this too loud? I know I'm hollering. Are you okay? Hallelujah! Oh. (laughs) So, when we remember that Jesus is our Lord, that He is the one that we hold fast our confession of faith, when... When we hold fast and we say, look, we hold fast to this. The doctor says, I don't really have a chance. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke that thing in my body. I do not carry it by. Okay, now listen to me. Listen to what I'm saying. Hold fast to your confession of faith in Jesus. Don't let it come out of your mouth. The doctor says, I'm doomed. I have no hope. Don't even speak it. Say, I come against that report in the name of Jesus. By his stripes, I was healed 2,000 years ago. I accept the healing today. Body, respond immediately in Jesus' name. And the power of God begins to operate inside of you. Amen? So hold fast to that confession of faith in Jesus. What was his name? Genesis to Revelations. What do you hold fast to? The word of the living God because it dictates the name of Jesus. And we begin to hold fast to that confession of faith. I believe in Jesus. I believe he called me. There ain't no devil or no spirit of infirmity going to take me out before I fulfill my commission in the earth. And when I fulfill my commission in the earth, I will say, okay, Lord, this weekend I'll come on and be with you. I ain't dying sick. I am not dying sick. Everybody say it. I am not dying sick. I am giving my spirit up at the right time to go be with the Lord at my command when the Lord speak to me. I mean, I know that's radical. But we serve a God that's radical 
and we've been operating like on rung one, and we ought to have been on rung 58. You understand what I'm saying? I'm just saying this because it's something I've experienced myself. I mean, with a new heart inside of me that God gave me, don't tell me laying hands on thousands of people, seeing them creative miracles take place. Don't tell me. It's too late. Let me tell you what the issue is. You better hold firm to your confession of faith in Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ runs from the beginning to the end of this Bible. He is the beginning and the end. Amen? So we got to let it be right. If you want... To really walk in the high places with God, you need to surrender to absolute lordship of Jesus Christ. You say, what does that mean? Lordship means you surrender your will to another's will and do what they say. Pretty easy to be saved. The, the, the grace message is being saved. The gospel message is being saved and walk in obedience. One without the other doesn't work. It's grace and faith together. Grace and obedience together. I can show you all through the Bible where there is the provision and the promise and the condition it takes to get there, you say, what do you mean? Is it works? No, it's faith. Your works is faith. Good works don't do it, but your works are faith. It's believing and trusting in God every minute of the day. Hold fast to your confession of faith. Hold fast to the provision of God. Hold fast and learn how to not have to go right to the brink and pull yourself out. Let's get to the point that we ride with him in the high places so that now we can teach somebody else how they can walk with God and not have to wait till destruction's right on their plate before they start. Let's start now. Amen? So as we surrender to the Lordship, He is Lord over everything according to Philippians 2, 9 through 11. Let me read it. Therefore, because He stooped so low, God is highly ex- uh, exalted him and has freely bestowed on him the name that is above every name. Okay, if his name's Genesis to Revelation. I know we say his name is Jesus, but it's, that word Jesus of Nazareth goes much deeper and further than most human beings realize. It says that he's got a name above every name. Amen? That in at that name of Jesus, every knee. Should, mu- should and must bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue openly will confess and acknowledge that Jesus is the Lord to the glory of God the Father. You see, you go back to believing in the heart and confessing with the mouth. Right there it talks about it. Calling on that name, it might even open things up further up to us, is every time you think about or you have a need or someone else you encounter has a need, uh, you can think, it's so easy to talk about healing. I've said it because when your body hurts, you want it healed. Uh, you, you're not going far without a body. You know where you're going to go without a body? immediately to be at the Lord, which isn't a bad thing, except you've got a destiny and a call on your life to help others get to know Him. Uh, You know, like we said Sunday or whenever it was, to be out of the body is to be with the Lord. And Paul said, for me to die is gain, but I've got a bigger call than that. I've got to stay behind because of you. You understand what I'm saying? So when you call, it says every knee will bow at the name of Jesus. Okay, what's his name? Deliverance from depression. What's his name? Deliverance from bad heart. What's his name? Deliverance from financial poverty. What's his name? Deliverance from oppression that's oppressed you for years. What's his name? Whatever it might be that you need, you call on the name of Jesus, and he will heal you and set you free. According to the Word of God. That's not me. That's God saying this. 
Amen? So I want to encourage you, when you submit to His Lordship, when you submit to the things that's spoken of here in, in Philippians, then you're submitting to a life of health, wealth, and prosperity. Amen? But we've not been challenged enough along that line. I mean, every one of you want physical prosperity. Your body's healed. Walking in divine health. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead will quicken your mortal body. That spirit already lives in you. Say, start quickening. In the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, quicken this body. Heal this body. Strengthen me in Jesus' name. Amen? Well, that's what it's saying. Every knee will bow. Every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. I can hear some of them demons running out now. Jesus is Lord. He's run me out. Jesus is Lord. He run me out. Can't y'all hear him screaming and going down the road? Fleeing from you as in terror? Resist the devil and he will flee from you. The Amplified says as in terror. Praise God. I'm excited. I mean, I continually declare. I do 1 Peter 5, 7 all the time. I don't have a care. Why? He took it. At Calvary's cross. He cares it. When we submit to His Lordship, He takes the burden. He takes the weight. And then what do you do? You walk by faith. You stick out your spiritual muscles and you say, I serve the true and living God. I walk upright. My God's given me everything I ever need to walk in prosperity, a full prosperity. When I talk about prosperity, spirit, soul, and body, I'm talking about walking in the full things of God. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about that I don't have a care. Everybody's, everybody say, Father God, I don't have a care because of what Jesus has done. Legally, I have everything that pertains to life and godliness. So tonight, I make a declaration that's being released to me by faith in Jesus' name. Healing come. Deliverance come, freedom come, joy come, peace come. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, it came. Y'all ought to be laughing a little bit more. It came. It came. Everybody say, it's here. <laughs> See, you don't have to labor for it. You've got to believe for it. Amen? So what are we going to continue to say when we hit opposition, when things look like it's in power? I don't have a care, Lord. This is your care. Now show me by faith. Give me an opportunity. I'm walking out of this, and I'm trusting you, and I'm not looking back in Jesus' name. I declare I'm free of that right now in Jesus' name. I declare that you carried it 2,000 years ago. I ain't picking it up in Jesus' name. You understand that we have victory through the cross of Calvary. And we read Psalms 23. Let me go over that right quick with you and uh, see what all we can dig out of Psalms 23. It's a short psalm, but we can make it as long as we want. Right? The Lord is my shepherd. What does a shepherd do? Takes care of the flock. Who are you? The flock. Did you know I worked on a 5,000 head sheep ranch? I've done all everything. <laughs> we get up and go, oh man, you, I know God was getting me ready for this. I mean, sheep are so crazy. I mean, I mean, you can't drive a sheep anywhere. The way you change them from one pen to the other is just get one of them put in the other pen and walk toward them. They'll jump past you and every one of them will go in the other pen. Did you know that? Did you know that a little old small cow can come out and have a big old fat sheep? My sheep 
can't do nothing. They just lay down and roll over and they can kill them. Did you know that a sheep, when they have a true shepherd that oversees them all the time, the minute danger comes, it never looks toward the danger. It always looks to where the shepherd's at because they put their trust in the shepherd. Did you know that? Did you know the minute that a wolf or coat comes into a sheep where you have a, a real shepherd that watches them all the time and lives out there with them like they do in Israel in different places, I'll guarantee you every time when they hear the wolf coming, they don't pay one bit of attention to the wolf. They locate the shepherd and get as close to him as they can. That is true. We need to do the same with the shepherd. We need to understand the Lord is my shepherd, my needs are met. The Lord is my shepherd, my needs are met. How are they met? Death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord. Then he said, I must go away that I can send the comforter to teach you, to encourage you, the Holy Spirit of the living God. I was talking to some uh, folks today about the Holy Spirit, and, and uh, really and truly, so many people don't really know why Jesus had to go away to send someone else to teach because they had to get him inside of us so that he could encourage us and teach us and protect us and take us to places we needed to go and be our interpreter of the word and all those kind of... So many people in the church at large don't know what it means. I mean, whenever I talk about being baptized in the Holy Spirit, I'm not talking about being baptized in water. I'm talking about being immersed in God in such a way that He brings you alive that you know and you're sensitive to what the Word says every day, every time. Amen. And it also, Jesus said, whenever you're baptized in the Holy Ghost, He will equip you with power to be a witness. With, with what? He says, I will equip you to be a witness with evidence experiential knowledge you understand what I'm saying so the Lord is my shepherd to feed to guide and to shield me I shall not lack I was in a Baptist church I don't know why they invited me but they invited me to do the New Year's Eve service well I knew the guy and he knew a bunch of people got healed and he was pretty open and so he wanted me to come and take the New Year's Eve service and this guy sang all night that was before me, I was supposed to get the service about, you know, 9 o'clock, 8 o'clock. I got the service at 11.30. I was younger and I was mad. When I time I got the service, I wasn't really in. And I sat. They had one of them boards, you know, like churches used to have that said how many people was there on Sunday and how much the offering was and what. The, and, and they was in a building program and they hadn't got it off the ground. And uh, they needed to build a new sanctuary, and they was going to do it in segments, and said, we lack. I don't know why the word lack in that service just made me hot. I, I just thought, we lack $12,000 for the next phase. And I was sitting, which I looked at that sign for three or four hours with this guy singing. And what really got me at 1130, he had about five kids, he walked off the platform. They turned it to me at 11.30. And him and his wife and five kids walked right out the back door and left. So I, I've been challenged too. I had to ask God to forgive me. I got up and I didn't even preach. I said, Pastor, can I take liberty to get rid of the lack in your church? He said, well, sure. Whatever you want. I asked first. I said, well... The last time I read, and I know they didn't mean it probably like this, but they'd never been taught. The last time I read, there was no lack in the kingdom of God. And I said, y'all have put up there for the world to see that you lack $12,000. And you got to imagine this was at 15 minutes till midnight on New Year's Eve, probably people wanting to go home and everything. And I said, I'm not going to keep you long, but what I want to do is prove to everybody in Cleburne, Texas, there's no lack in the kingdom of God. 
And so I called a lady up. I said, where's your secretary? She said, right here. I said, bring a notepad up. We're killing the lack tonight. And so she came up and said, and all of them, they didn't know what I was going to do. I said, okay, who wants to give toward that lack so that we can eradicate it? I need 12000 right now, whatever it might be. In 10 minutes, we had over $12,000 raised. I said, would you mind taking that word off of your deal that we lack? No, pastor, I'll do that right now. I said, well, here, you're going. And they, they built their building, and they learned something that night that when you really push and believe in God, all the lack is gone through the provision of God. People were there wanting to fill the lack. They was there that night wanting to eradicate it through God. It was eradicated in 10 minutes. What I'm saying, we have no lack. It says that in the Amplified, I shall not lack. The only way you'll lack if you don't believe in this covenant right by faith. Jesus said, every one of you, I've given you a supernatural measure of faith. And he also says, if you've got the faith of the grain of a mustard seed, you can move heaven. So you don't have to lay it off that you're just a little pew person and these big pastors get it all. Let me tell you, you got enough to move heaven and get hell out of your way and every lack be filled in Jesus' name. Amen? He makes me to lie down in fresh, tender, green. That means he gives me peace of mind. I can just bask in the provision of God. I don't have to be afraid tonight or today. I can go home and lay down and get a good night's sleep. Worry is not part of my program. Say, worry is not part of my program. Because it's not part of his. (laughs) He took it and bore it for me. Okay, now listen. He leads me beside the still and restful waters. That means the Holy Spirit comes as your guide. And He'll lead you in the places you need to go and the places you don't need to go. He will comfort you along the way and encourage you if you'll get in the book. Amen? So what does it say here? It says, He refreshes and restores my life. He leads me in the paths of righteousness, uprightness and right standing with Him. Not for my earning it. Get that out of your head. That being good gets you in the right place with God. Being in faith and good, it doesn't hurt to be good. But walking by faith gets you in the provision of God. You can't earn it, but yet your righteous cause, the righteousness inside, the fruits of righteousness will result in good when you learn to walk by faith. For his namesake he's done it. Yes, though I walk through deep sunless valley, the shadow of death, I will fear or dread no evil. You are with me, your rod to protect, your staff to guide, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil to brimming over. Surely, how can, can you say this? Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Well, I'm free from sickness, according to Isaiah 53. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief, and we hid as if were, our faces were from him. He was despised and esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne, there's again, surely he hath borne our griefs. You folks that's carrying grief, get rid of it tonight. Let the joy of the Lord come into you. Let it set you free. He's carried our griefs, our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes 
we are healed. They were looking to the cross. And we like sheep have all gone astray. We've turned uh, uh, everyone to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed. He was afflicted. Yet he did not open his mouth. He brought us freedom. Like never before. So according to Isaiah 53, 3 through 5, I can make this declaration and this confession. I don't make it because of what's in my body or attacking my, attacking my... I make it because of what God said, just like He spoke to Abraham. I am free from every sickness. Everybody say, I'm free of every sickness, every disease, sorrow, and I'm free of grief. Jesus bore them for me. I will not accept them. I declare I am a free man or woman. I'll never go back. I will walk with my God in the high spiritual places. I receive revelation tonight of who I am in Christ Jesus. 1 Corinthians 1.30 says this, Jesus has made unto me wisdom. Amen? Righteousness. Sanctification and redemption. Does that cover it all? Let me tell you, you're such wonderful people. God has brought us to this place to come and let the simplistic Word of God take root inside of us. That simple confessions, knowing that every knee will bow, every tongue confess, that Jesus is Lord over diseases, depression, oppression, poverty, everything, confusion, disharmony. Jesus is Lord over it all. And I have made it possible, Jesus said, so that you can walk in the lordship that Jesus had. And if you will learn to walk in his lordship and lay down your own will, I'm telling you, he will show you a path that is victorious. And whatever the doctor says or the naysayer said, your bank account says, or everything else says, even your own thoughts you have to take in charge of, you will walk in the high places with God, and I will guarantee you will be a different person from tonight forward if you will not turn your back on it and not think it's crazy or silly, if you'll begin to start declaring Jesus is Lord. And when you say it, when you say that, know what you're saying. When Jesus is Lord, He's Lord over everything that pertains to you. He's Lord over every bad thing, over every poverty-stricken spirit, over every spirit of infirmity. He's Lord over everything, and He's given you health, wealth, and prosperity in Jesus' name. Know what it says. That's what He's saying tonight. You're my children, He says. I love you. I want you to walk with me in the high places. I want you to come alive to me. Don't look back, but go with me and let me show you how I can bless you on every front, says the Spirit of God. For I desire to have a church that walks in the realm of the miraculous, says the Spirit of God. For I will show and display my Jesus through you if you will walk with me in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, give him some praise if you would. Remember this Sunday, pot blessing. We're going to bless one another. We're going to serve one another, and as we do, we're serving God. When we serve man, we serve God. And we want to walk and be encouraged this week. Great and mighty things are happening. We're going to recognize that our God is, is being put back and called to be back in charge of our nation through men and women empowered by the Spirit of God. We need to understand things are great. We need to understand that... When did we get these up? 
In God we trust. And that, well, I did, I was too busy Sunday to see him. The what? They went up last week, Miss Pat. They, they are wonderful. Praise God. Praise God. Yep. Praise the Lord. Okay, well, we need to pray for somebody. Honey? What are you trying to tell me? I mean, don't do it in Mars code. I don't know it. <laughs> what is it, honey? Be bold. Be strong. For the Lord our God is with us. Huh? I can't hear you. Let me tell you something. That ain't because I'm old. I could hear her if she'd talk up. <laughs> you know what I had to do for my wife today? She was in her closet, and she was talking, and all of a sudden, I, I repeated what she said, and you know what she nearly said, and she caught herself? She nearly said, you need a... Oh, I ain't saying that, she said. I said, no, what it is... Your voice, you're not speaking words the way you should. You need to form your words better so I can understand them. And she started doing it, and I could understand her. Isn't it right? Have any other men have that, that we have to correct that? And we got to get, get them where they speak more clearly. I, I mean, because I don't know if his women just speak in a different tongue or what. But the thing about it is, I could hear perfect. I could hear, I thought, well, all of a sudden she was praying in tongues. I, and uh, I said, honey, are you praying in tongues to build yourself up or me? And she said, honey, you might need, I said, oh, she said, I'm not saying it. I said, you better not say it because my ears are perfect. They're healed and I hear perfect. I said, it's your talking. I'm believing God for you talking to straighten up. And then my granddaughter and my daughter all the time. They, they're always talking to me and driving or something. And, she, they, and I'm sitting here driving. They're looking at the door, some elk or something, and they're going, shoot, 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 shoot. and I'm saying, and I'm saying, uh, I'm saying, wait a minute, God gave you more air than that. Let's get something out that people can hear, man. Talk up. Uh, Duke, you got anything you want to share? Just share something right now out of the Holy Ghost. Well, as I have shared with you, my, my favorite verse in the Bible, that's a difficult thing to say because the word of God is unbelievable. But in Hebrews 10, 23, it says that once you no longer have any room for doubt who Jesus is, now, you see what that is saying, I just love, I just love the writer or writers, man, women, whatever, that said that because that gave me more than revelation. That is it. Because that is our connection to God. Once you, once you realize there's no longer any room for doubt, who Jesus is. See, because he covers Genesis to Revelations. He covers everything that you have need of. It's already in the bank. What we got to do is learn the code to the ATM machine of heaven. And it releases. And the code is F-A-I-T-H. And it will release for you. He, oh, now I've got it. Stand up. A, stand up a minute. <laughs> he ain't you preaching yet. Something. You said something tonight that really knocked me out. You said that you don't have to labor for it. Hey, man. Oh, oh you have to believe. See, that's the whole thing anyhow. 
Just to believe. Why is it so difficult for us just to believe? Because it's supernatural. So once we do, our life turns into supernatural. And, and Brother Duke, that's why he sent the Holy Spirit. And so many people have fought the true move of the Holy Spirit. Because that takes the labor out as you walk in faith through the Word. And the Holy Spirit brings Jesus alive out of your heart now that Word. I mean, that takes the work out of it. Amen? Okay, thank you, Brother Duke. Okay. Every one of you better be here Sunday morning, ready, fired up, raring to go, and bring somebody with you and get here early so you can get a seat, and then you can get up and say, Oh, y'all are first-timers. Take my seat. Amen? 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 Everybody in this room is saved, baptized in the Holy Ghost. If not, by Sunday afternoon you will be. Amen? Because it's crucial to take the next step. You don't have to understand it. It's like trying to understand how they formulate chocolate off of a cocoa tree. Just eat it. It's good for you. I mean, they used to say, Brother Hagen would always say, you don't have to know all the law of lift and thrust to get an airplane ticket bought. If you did, you'd never buy one. So just go buy the ticket and get on the plane. He'll take you to places you've never been. And Sunday, come expecting. And if you haven't ever been baptized in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongue, get this week prepared Come in Sunday, and it's going to happen in Jesus' name. Amen. I love all of you. God is so good, and He is so faithful for you. There is no lack in your life in Jesus' name. God bless you. We'll see you Sunday morning. Bring a pot, a blessing, and we're going to have a great time. God bless you. You're dismissed.